No theater dates back to the 14th century. It is one of the oldest continuously performed theatrical traditions in the world. No combines dance, chant, music, and costume into a unique and sublime performance. The movements of the performers are simple and fixed and suggest something beautiful beyond the no or stage. The dance is measured and elegant. The chanting of the shte, the principal performer, and the chorus is an intense combination of prose and verse. The accompanying music composed of flute and drums creates a syncopation that makes the dance and chant still more intense. As one watches a no, it is the robes and mask of the shte that grab an audience's attention. These are not simply costumes or accessories. They are an integral part of the no. The Japanese term for no costumes is no shōzoku. This is the same term used for the garments of both the aristocratic court nobility and the military aristocracy. The Japanese word isho is used when talking about costumes for kabuki theater and Japanese dance. In kabuki and dance, the costumes generally reflect the tastes and aspirations of commoners. Isho is never used to describe no costumes, which are on par with the garments of the nobility. While there are roughly 240 no in the standard no repertoire, there are only about 20 different types of no costumes. It is the draping, wearing, and combining of the different elements that define the various roles in a no performance, and that can also affect how one performs. あの、あの、足の動かし方ってそんなに変わらないんだけども、そういう風なこう舞台上でこう自分が考えてた以外の制約を受けることっていうのはね、結構ありますね。足があんまり動かせない状態で座るっていうことになってくる。そうすると腰がこう下までちゃんと降りない時もあるね。途中でもストップして
When worn for a male courtier warrior, the karaori is often worn under a choken to accentuate his elegant refinement. In the no aoi no ue, a folded karaori is placed at the front of the stage to represent the figure of the dying Lady Aoi. Thus, one garment, a karaori, can function as a dress, an undergarment, a cloak, and even a prop. <laughs> No costumes, particularly those worn by the shte, the principal performer, fill the rather bare and subdued stage with spectacular bursts of color. Whether they are colorful, stiff brocades, subdued, airy gauze fabrics, or soft, shiny silks decorated with multicolored woven embroidery and metallic foil. The creation of no costumes is an extremely sophisticated art form that involves multiple levels of highly skilled craftspeople. From the making of the silk threads, to their dyeing with natural pigments, from the designing of the pattern, to the embroidery-like weaving, no costumes represent some of the world's most magnificent textiles. Even when viewed apart from the drama, no costumes are impressive works of art that display the Japanese sense of beauty through the skills of experienced artisans. The majority of no costumes are crafted in the Nishijin district of Kyoto. Nishijin is the name of the district of Kyoto west of the Imperial Palace, in which weaving has been carried out since the late 15th century. Nishijin is used as a general term for textiles woven in the Nishijin district. There's also a specific Nishijin weave structure, but no costumes are not woven with that technique. Broadly speaking, Nishijin weaving is some of the most sophisticated weaving to be found anywhere in the world and embodies Japanese aesthetics and an endless quest for perfection. Weavers form the essential base of Nishijin's industry, with most working in their own homes or in small workshops employing from 10 to 20 workers. Every no costume is a one-of-a-kind work of art, though some are produced as sister kimono with one element in the weaving altered in the copy. The uniqueness of each no costume is very fitting for a theatrical tradition in which each performance is a one-time event. The first step in the production of a costume is designing it. First, a draft sketch is done and then transferred onto graph paper where each square represents a certain number of warp and weft threads. The sketch indicates warp by warp, the pattern to be woven for one pattern block. The draft sketch basically determines how the loom will be set up, and this involves various people. From the dyer who has to color the appropriate weft and warp threads, to the warpers and heddle slingers who set up the loom, to the weavers themselves. The fabrics used for no costumes are woven by hand on complex looms. Many no costumes have three levels of weaving. First, there is the ground weave which is woven in twill and operated with foot pedals. Then there is the pattern weave controlled by drawstrings. And finally, there is the discontinuous pattern that floats on the surface with an embroidered look. It takes a weaver many years of apprenticeship to master the skills required to manipulate the dozens of shuttles that create the Nishiki, multicolored pattern brocade-like weave. あの、
刈り絹ばっかり折ってて、まあ、そこから空折りを折るようになってでその空折りっていうのはやっぱり金蘭と違って色を扱う折り物なのであの農学もちゃんと勉強しないといけないし例えばそのこの役の人にはこの色合いのものをっていうのをちゃんと勉強しないといけないのでそこから農学を勉強するようになって。There are two basic thread components in weaving. Warp threads and weft threads. Warping threads are wound around a warping drum and are the lengthwise or longitudinal threads. Weft threads are usually on a shuttle that is then thrown, drawn, or pulled through over and under the warp threads. Though some weavers can do it themselves, most weavers commission out the warping of the threads to people who specialize just in the winding of the warp threads onto the warping drum. The trickiest part of this process is ensuring that each thread has the same tension across and throughout the roll. Otherwise, the completed woven cloth will be inconsistent. If the pattern forms blocks, called dangawari, then setting up the warp involves not only maintaining an even tension across the entire width of some 5,000 warp threads, but also making adjustments in the placement of the individual threads so as to line up the color shifts as evenly as possible. Once the warp drum is attached to the loom, then the thousands of individual threads need to be properly and accurately pulled through the heddles and secured to the breast beam. Heddles control the warp yarn and determine the weaving pattern by opening the shed in an order dictated by the weave structure or in groupings that arrange the threads for weaving the pattern. To weave the ground level, the weaver passes weft threads on a shuttle all the way across the warp shed. There is one heddle system that produces the ground weave, whether that be a twill, satin, or plain weave. The ground weave heddles are operated by foot pedals, and the large shuttle is thrown all the way across the fabric for ground wefts. In addition to the ground weave, there is a pattern heddle system that contains the underlying design of the garment. Five or six adjacent warp threads are passed through each pattern heddle. Which can be operated individually by being pulled or drawn up. During the Edo period, a draw boy, or sometimes the weaver's wife, sat atop the draw loom to operate these pattern heddles, working in rhythm with the weaver, who sat at the warp beam weaving in the weft. The draw boy manipulated the warp by hand, selecting and batching the strands of the warp that had to be clustered in various configurations in order to determine the design. This type of weaving can be seen in the no kureha, wu weavers. Today, draw looms have been replaced by jacquard system looms. The jacquard system was introduced in 1873 during the Meiji period and it transformed the Japanese weaving industry. On a jacquard loom, the information on the design is translated to the heddles through holes in punch hole cards. The cardboard punch hole cards function like a computer program. And in fact, the idea for computer programming came from the jacquard loom. Holes are punched into these cards based on an accurate reading of the design that indicates the lifting and lowering of the warp threads, a single card being equivalent to one set of weft shots. The number of cards necessary to weave one no costume depends on the pattern and the number of colors used. The pattern is woven upside down on the loom. Consequently, the weaver must check the pattern by looking in a mirror underneath the loom, which reflects the right side of the fabric. That is the side that people see. In addition to the basic weave level and the pattern level, is the magnificent supplementary float weave that resembles embroidery. It is in this level that the artistry and skill of a master weaver shines through. Some very decorative no fabrics have gold woven into them. Gold leaf is glued onto Japanese paper and then cut into fine strips, which are pulled through on a bamboo hook and woven into the ground pattern. Each of these thin strips of gold leaf covered paper retails for about 10 yen. And tens of thousands of them are woven into a single no costume. Many no costumes today have lots of gold woven into them. And as you can see, it is woven all the way across the garment, thus making it both very expensive and very heavy to dance and move in. A typical kara ori 
requires about 12 to 13 meters of fabric, 50 centimeters wide, and weighs about 4 kilograms. The weaving of a karaori can take anywhere from 25 days for a relatively simple design to 70 days for a complex design. カラオリーが舞台上で一番目立つ部分っていうのは袖なんですね。左袖やね。うん、左袖なので、まずえっ、ー、とね、折り始めは左袖から折り始めます。うん、で、左袖に一番いいと思う配色を持って行って、それを折り上がったら社長に見せて、OK もらえば、そこからもうずっとつなげてる。あの左腕の配色をベースに全体の配色を考えて折っていきます。A typical no program is made up of a number of no interlaced with comedic Kyogen performances. Every no program is a single gathering of different performers and musicians for just one show, with each no from the repertoire only performed at a particular no theater once every several years. The Shte is the principal performer of a no, and he produces his entire no performance from selecting the other performers and musicians to choosing the costumes and masks that he will wear. It is his show, and he is the one who shines the brightest on the stage. In the past, a day's program was often comprised of five no and four kyogen. Today, a typical program is made up of two no and one kyogen, with each no being about 90 minutes long and a kyogen about 20 minutes. There are roughly 240 no in the no repertoire, and they are divided into the following five categories. God, warrior, woman, miscellaneous, and demon. First category, god no, or kami no, often feature a human in the first act and a deity in the second. The no tend to focus on a particular shrine or divine figures. The no frequently contain auspicious tidings as the central figure bestows blessings or promises of peace and happiness. Second category warrior no are usually tales of tormented warriors stuck in the realm of warring hell. There are 16 warrior no, with most of the stories coming from the legendary war tales, the tale of the Heike. The Shte usually appears as a wandering ghost in the first act, and then in the second act as a warrior in full battle regalia, where he reenacts a famous episode from his life. Third category, women no, or wig no, katsura mono, frequently focus on female ghosts trapped on earth and suffering from love. The woman needs their spirits to be released from its attachment to her lost love. Many of the women are characters from the tale of Genji, and Tales of Issei. Fourth category, or miscellaneous no, is a catch-all category for no that do not fit in the other four groupings. There are about 95 of these no that deal with themes such as suffering and vengeful ghosts, grieving spirits, and madness engendered by jealousy. Fifth category no are referred to as final no since they are sometimes the last no of a day's program and as demon no, since they frequently revolve around demons, goblins, and monsters. There are about 30 fifth category no, and they are usually a little shorter than the other no. These no are some of the flashiest pieces with loud, vibrant costumes, lively music, and energetic dancing. However many no are part of a day's program, they will always be presented in this category sequencing. If a program is comprised of a woman no and a warrior no, the warrior no will always come first. If a program is comprised of a demon no and a woman no, the woman no will come first. While some no are in one act, many are in two acts, with a change of costumes between acts. Thus, if you were to go to a no performance today, you would most likely see at least three or four different shte costume combinations, all worn in very different ways. Oh, oh, oh. 
Wooden nose stages are small and bare. The majority of people on the stage, from the eight member chorus to the musicians and assistants, are all dressed in nondescript black family crest kimono tucked into gray or brown hakama. The waki, who tend to enter the stage, say a few words and then sit at the front stage left for the majority of the performance, are generally, but not always, dressed in rather simple clothing. Similarly, the Ai Kyogen, who comes in to summarize events during the interlude between acts, is often, but not always, in rather plebeian checks in simpler fabrics with gold generally not woven into the garment. The Waki and Ai Kyogen frequently bring several costumes appropriate to that day's no to the performance and decide right before the show which one to wear based on what everyone else in that day's no will be wearing. The star of the show and usually the most colorful persona on the stage is the Shite, the principal performer. The Shite's costume frequently has lots of gold woven into it that literally makes the Shite shine bright on the stage. The Shite's costumes are the finest and most beautiful no costumes, and the ones this film will mostly focus on. The Shite Tsure, or Shite's companion, who appear in the same pieces, is also elegantly dressed, but the Shite's costume is always superior. No masks are transcendent works of art that reveal both the face of the character and the inner life of the character. They are made by highly skilled artisans who adhere to centuries of tradition when making their masks. Though masks are an important part of the overall costume, this film is only going to focus on the garments of the shite. For a more detailed look at no masks, please check out the first film in this series, which focuses on no masks. In selecting the garments and masks for his no, the shite is interpreting that role for that particular performance. Though guided by tradition-bound regulations, when selecting the garment, the shite is considering the overall impact of the design, color and harmony of all of the elements. The shite is not selecting a costume based on any literal symbolic associations. For an initiated audience, a costume's fabric, cut, drape, color, and design motifs function as visual indicators in identifying such matters as the character's sex, age, social status, and emotional state. While the cut and combination of the garment types identify the role, the colors and motifs suggest the season and dignity of the no. While the rest of the no stage is somewhat subdued and consists mostly of earth tones, the Shite's costume completes the visual picture. It is the flashiest, most extravagant visual on the stage. No masks are extraordinary works of art, but they can be difficult to see from out in the audience. Some wigs are spectacular. But the Shite's costume is always a blast of color. In other words, the Shite's costume is to know what wasabi is to sushi, a complimentary but invigorating element. Because no costumes are made of silk, they are never washed, and in order to minimize the soiling of the costumes, performers wear padded undergarments to soak in their sweat. This makes the shte both hotter and adds to the overall weight and bulk of the costume, within which they must dance, sing, and perform. While no costumes are shared, each shite owns and wears their own padded undergarments and shawl-like collars. The color of this inner collar is set by tradition and very telling of the role. Frequently, two colored collars are worn and are often an allusion to the 12 layers of robes worn by Han period aristocratic women. There are five shite collar colors, white, red, dark blue, brownish gold, and aqua or light blue. Although it only glimpses out as a small strip around the neckline, the inner collar reflects the social status of the character portrayed. White for the highest order, red for the next. Dark blue for powerful warriors and demons, light blue for old women and lowly fishermen. Once in their undergarments, 
and the stay goes to the dressing room next to the stage where the costume is laid out. Frequently, small stuffed silk pillows are inserted as padding to add bulk to the stomach. Two or three or more other shte, who are frequently members of the chorus for other no performances for that day, dress the principal shte. This assisting in the dressing of the shte is one of the most important elements in the passing on of no from one generation of shte to the next. Only those trained to be a shte from their youth really know how to dress someone in a no costume. For those who study no as a hobby, this is one aspect of no that they will probably never master and more than likely will never really learn. All Shte learn how to wear costumes, but it takes decades to master. Within each No school, there are Shte that are known to have an excellent eye for costuming. They know how to adjust the costume just right and where to sew it so that it presents the best lines. How a particular robe is worn often depends on the role being played, and it is the draping that allows no costumes to be worn in multiple ways. No costumes are heavy, but it's not something a shte notices when performing.最中でそこまでなりきって出ていくことはなかなか難しいですけども一応鏡を見てそこまでは成りきるように頑張って出ていきます唯一出る時に鏡に映してああこういう姿かということを自分で納得して出ていきます最初まあ一生懸命やってる
Much of the language is of an elevated style and is sometimes hard for the audience to follow. Thus, the Ai Kyogen serves as a vehicle for the Shite to change their costumes and for the audience to gain a deeper understanding of the no they are watching. Most no costumes are made from the highest quality silk, and the single most important factor in determining the quality of silk thread is the type of silkworm used. During the Edo period, nearly 1,000 different strains of silkworms were bred. Silk production is a complex and difficult undertaking as everything from the weather and the season the cocoons are ready to the skill of the thread spinner affects the quality of the silk thread produced. In the past, all thread was hand spun. We can see the spooling of thread portrayed in the no Adachi Gahara, Adachi Fields. Silkworms eat only mulberry leaves, and they produce their cocoon by spinning one continuous thread, roughly 1,300 meters long for some breeds, which is spun around and around and held together with gum. With hand spinning, the thickness of the thread varied depending on what the final product was to be, as well as what type of silkworm was used. The number of silk cocoon filaments spun into warp threads, for example, may be 10 to 12, and for weft threads, about 25, with one strain of silkworm, but five filaments for warp threads and 15 to 17 for weft threads with a different strain. To reel off this thread, one must catch the end of the thread by placing the cocoon in very hot water, which loosens the gum. It is easiest to pull the thread from live cocoons within a day or two of maturation. The more days that pass, the harder it is to find the end of the thread and the more brittle the thread becomes. Some say that the best kind of thread for no costumes is that from the live pupa of spring silkworms taken about 43 days from hatching to cocooning. As productivity and demand rose during the Edo period, it became impossible to process all the cocoons immediately, and methods were developed that involve killing the pupa and drying the cocoon which enabled filature to continue over a longer period of time. So what might it take to make an Edo period no karaori? An Edo period karaori requires about 3.6 kilograms of thread. To produce 3.6 kilograms of silk thread requires about 11,000 silkworms who will need to eat about 400 kilograms of mulberry leaves over a period of a month to a month and a half depending on the breed. After the silk is spun into thread, the thread is dyed. Historically, plant-based natural dyes were used by dyers who closely guarded their secrets. Thus, we can only roughly guess at some of the dyeing methods used in the past. There are four basic steps to dyeing. First, a dye bath is created by soaking or boiling the dye plant. Next, the prepared yarn is immersed in the dye bath. This step sometimes involves multiple baths and airings to oxidize the yarn between baths. After the yarn has received the desired color, a mordant is used to fix the color to the yarn. Finally, the yarn is washed and dried. In reality, the process of dyeing wasn't as easy as one, two, three, four. It was often very time consuming and difficult. Purple was made from the purple gromwell or shikon plant while reds were made from the Japanese safflower, or benibana plant. Blues were dyed with indigo, with various levels of intensities. Some colors required two dyings. True greens, for example, started with a yellow base of kariyasu that was then top-colored with an indigo blue. As already noted, no costumes are extremely expensive to produce, and just dyeing the thread could be incredibly time-consuming and costly. To dye enough scarlet thread for two karaori, took about two years and required 50 kilograms or so of turmeric for the underdying, then about 60 kilograms of safflower dye, followed by some 40 odd dippings in the dye solution until the desired color was obtained. Without the patronage of the highest ranking members of the military aristocracy, it is doubtful that no would have thrived as well as it did during the Edo period. 
It was an entertainment for the elites that required the bankroll of the elites. Today, mostly synthetic dyes are used as natural dyes are just too expensive. Synthetic dyes produce a very uniform color, but as some connoisseurs like to point out, the color is too perfect, it is too flat and even. Natural dyes created subtle differences in the woven yarn that created a heavenly beauty that was revealed on stage that some say is missing in modern costumes made with uniform synthetic dyes. After the thread is spun and dyed, it is then prepared for weaving by being put on the warp drum and the shuttles. A weaver then spends weeks weaving the cloth. When the weaving is finished, the cloth is sent to the tailor. There are roughly 20 different types of no costumes. They are generally divided into three large categories based on form. Osodemono, or broad-sleeved outer mantles. Kosodemono, or kimono with single-width sleeves, small cuff openings, and overlapping lapels, which form a V in front. And hakama, or divided skirts, pleated pants. Here's a brief overview of some of the major types of no costumes. The kariginu is a broad-sleeved outer garment that evolved from a Heian nobleman's hunting cloak. Kariginu have braided cords along the edges of the sleeves that can be pulled together and tightened around the wrist openings so that the massive sleeves do not hinder the wearer in their activities, such as hunting. The hapi is a broad-sleeved cloak unique to know that is worn exclusively by male characters and over Atsuita. It is worth pointing out that this is not the hapi you may be more familiar with that is worn at Japanese festivals. The hapi's double width open sleeves form a square, as the front and back panels are joined by a strap at the hem. Hapi come lined and unlined to express the strength or gentleness of the character. Lined hapi of gold brocade are the garb of supernatural beings or of Genji warriors in full armor, such as this scene from the no Yashima of Minamoto no Yoshitsune. Unlined hapi are worn by a shite portraying armored young noblemen of the Heike clan. Choken and Maigino are both outer dancing cloaks worn primarily for female roles, though Choken are sometimes worn for male roles such as a young nobleman of the Heike clan. Both are made from a lightweight gauze weave of unglossed silk with designs often woven with gold and silver yarns. Maeginu tend to have an overall pattern, while Choken have a flowing pattern. Both have broad open sleeves with overlapping panels in front. The Maeginu and Choken are very similar to each other, but differ a bit in tailoring and draping. The Maeginu differs from the Choken in that its sides are sewn together, and the balance between the length of the sleeve panels and the many body panels is more even in a Maeginu than a Choken. The Mizugoromo is the most common outer garment worn in No. It was created especially for No during the early Edo period. The Mizugoromo is an overcoat worn by males and females, young and old, priests and laymen. They are made of lightweight woven silk. Draped loosely, it becomes a coat for old women, traveling or working women, shrine priestesses and nuns. With a belt, it becomes an outer jacket for dignified old men, monks, fishermen, woodsmen, hunters, ghosts suffering in hell, and deities in the guise of youths. The Hitatare and Suo are similar costumes that consist of a matching jacket and pleated hakama pants. The hakama can either be the extra-long nagabakama with its long trailing pant legs or the ankle-length hanbakama. The suo and the hitatari are identical in cut and fabric, but the hitatare is lined, making it more formal than the unlined suo. Hitatare are worn by members of the military class, while suo are the everyday wear of common warriors, particularly fallen warriors and the informal clothes of ordinary men. 
Now virtually synonymous with no costumes, the brocade kara-ori garment worn for female roles is the quintessential no costume, as it exemplifies the elegant colorfulness associated with no. Kara-ori are woven with many colors, as well as gold and silver, and what truly sets them apart are the floating weft designs that create a three-dimensional relief and give one the impression that they are embroidered. Kara-ori is written with the Chinese characters reading Chinese weave, and the cloth is descended from a highly prized textile imported from China during the Muromachi period for the shogun's private use. When a shite performs as a young woman, they will often wear an ido iri or with color kara-ori. This means that it is a red costume. When performing the role of a middle-aged or older woman, or divine woman, the shite will wear a costume that is ido nashi, or without color, meaning it is not red. Though primarily a costume for women's roles, kara-ori may also be used for sprites and as an underrobe for young courtier warriors. The ground color for kara-ori can either be a single color, or it can come in an alternating block checkerboard design known as dangawari. The Atsuita is an inner garment usually worn for male roles, young or old, noble or mean, human or beast. Like kara-ori, Atsuita refers to a specific kind of woven material. The word Atsuita means thick board and refers to textiles that were wrapped around a wooden plank for transport. Atsuita are generally worn for male roles and worn under Hapi, Kariginu, Choken, and Mizugoromo for roles of gods, demons, warriors, old men, monks, and ghosts. While Kata-ori tend to have feminine floral motifs, Atsuita have more masculine designs of stripes or checks, clouds and hexagons, arrows, Buddhist ritual implement wheels, and cloud-shaped gongs. The surihaku is an inner garment usually worn for female roles. Surihaku are decorated with designs that are created by pressing gold or silver leaf on paste, which is applied in the desired pattern on the fabric. First, stencils are made that create a repeated pattern all over the garment. Then, adhesive is applied through the stencil and onto the stretched cloth. Next, very thin sheets of gold or silver foil is applied gently to the cloth. Once the adhesive dries, the excess gold or silver is brushed off with a feather. Surihaku sometimes have patterns all over, while other times only certain areas like the chest or sleeves are decorated. Since surihaku are sometimes worn in a draping style that exposes only the upper portion of the garment, often only that part is fully patterned. Common motifs for surihaku include bamboo grass with dew, flower diamonds, floral designs, water, rice fields, and triangle scales. Nuihaku are worn as an outer garment that are frequently worn in a folded down style and sometimes as inner garments for female roles. Nuihaku are made of lustrous woven silk in a satin weave. They have stenciled gold or silver leaf decoration that are often embellished with embroidery. Nuihaku, together with karaori, are said to represent the Japanese sense of beauty in no costumes. Okuchi are plain colored divided hakama pants with large pleats in front and stiffened gathered panels in the back. These short length trousers have tucks in the front which are made of silk, while the solid flat square back is made of ribbed fabric. These hakama are worn for both male and female roles of high ranks. Hangiri are brightly patterned broad stiff pleated hakama and are worn by high class warriors, demons, bandits, and strong gods. Hangiri are usually made with a large patterned gold brocade satin, and the rear panels contain tatami straw matting as an interlining. While the Okuchi style of hakama were incorporated into no from everyday wear, hangiri hakama were invented for no. The main difference between okuchi and hangiri is that okuchi are a different fabric in the front and the back, while hangiri uses the same fabric front and back. One other difference is that okuchi have waistbands made from the same fabric as the skirts, while hangiri generally have waistbands made of a single color silk. The thin strap tied around a wig in a female role is called a katsura obi, or wig obi. They are often embroidered and have metal leaf ornamentation. A wide waist sash is called a koshi obi. 
Koshi Obi are tied around Kariginu, Hapi, and Mizugoromo. Koshi Obi are often highly decorated with embroidery and frequently have gold and silver ornamentation. The most visible part of the Koshi Obi is the rectangular portion that drops down from the performer's waist and often has an image that repeats three times down its length. No is meant to be enjoyed by all who experience it, and does not require a great deal of previous knowledge to appreciate. However, a deeper knowledge of No costumes can reveal a great deal to an audience member about the character and setting of the No. On a very basic and obvious level, the sumptuous silks in complex weaves recall the majesty of ancient court life. While a few costumes are character-specific, such as the Okina Kariginu with its shoko patterns, other costumes are more general except for the color red, which was reserved for youth, particularly young females. The general pattern or color is selected based on conventions for the role. While the color scheme of the costume may set the mood, the imagery on it will evoke the season, or perhaps reference the literary heritage of the No, or may indicate age, power, refinement, or other attributes of the character. The repeated pattern of triangular scales, for example, symbolizes deep attachment and uncontrolled passion or jealousy in women and is used for female characters who appear as a demon or serpent. In the no Aoi no Ue, which is based on an episode from the tale of Genji, the shite portrays Lady Rokujo, Genji's former mistress whose jealous spirit attacks Lady Aoi, Genji's wife, who is represented solely by a robe lying on the stage floor. In the first act of the no, the gold triangular scales of the inner robe peek out at the neck, foreshadowing the demonic events to follow. In the second act, the true nature of the jealous serpent is revealed with her triangular scales as a priest tries to exorcise the demon. Costumes need to be appropriate and indicative, but not explanatory. There should be no spring flowers in a place set in the fall, and an elderly woman should not be wearing red. But a shite will never pick a costume that explains the situation. He wants it to be impressionistic and to evoke a feeling for time and place. Thus, bold, large patterns for exciting roles, and softer, delicate patterns for softer roles. で、秋のものだったら同じ若い女性でも秋草って言われるのもう少しこう落ち着いたあの、同じ女性のキャラクター、若い女性としても春の曲か秋の曲かっていうことによってそういう柄を分けたりすることもあります。Patterns on female costumes tend to follow a Japanese aesthetic, while patterns on male robes have a more Chinese aesthetic sense. Costumes for female roles are adorned with a wide variety of floral and plant designs, reflecting the beauty of the four seasons of Japan. For example, plum and cherry blossoms convey early spring, while dandelions and weeping cherries are indicative of mid-spring. Summer is symbolized by wisteria, iris, and wild pink. Colored leaves, fall grasses, bush clover, and insects express autumn, while snow-capped bamboo, willow, and pine trees represent winter. Thus, a shite might wear this costume covered in pine trees for a no set in winter. For male roles, some common motifs are tortoise shell, or a hexagon pattern, ox carriage, or genji wheels, auspicious clouds, Buddhist implement wheels, and circular feathers and clouds. One very telling aspect of a warrior costume is the way the shite wears their hat. Most warrior no are from the tale of the Heike, which depicts the Genpei War of 1180 to 1185, between the house of the Minamoto, also known as the Genji, and the Taira clan, also known as the Heike. The Minamoto won this war, which marks the emergence of warrior-led governments in Japan. In no, the victorious Minamoto warriors have their hats bent towards the Shite's left side,
while the defeated Tyra warriors had their hats bent to their right side. No costumes are never washed, thus great care is taken to keep them in good condition. After a performance, they are aired out for a day or two before being folded up and stored away. All no costumes can be folded flat for storage, and most are stored in Japanese washi paper. When the robes are placed on shelves or on top of each other, care is taken that the heavier costumes with lots of gold in them are on the bottom, while the lighter gauzy robes are on the top. When taken to a performance, they are placed in a cloth and folded into a suitcase. New costumes are rather stiff and rigid, and it takes a few years of using them until they soften up. Unlike masks, which often get better with age and can be used for hundreds of years, the life of many costumes is only about 30 or 40 years. The sewing of a karaori into place, for example, takes its toll on the costume. Once a costume is past its prime, it is only used on special occasions. When no emerged in the 14th century, many of the costumes worn by the performers were similar to the clothing worn by people of the different social classes. Zeami Motokio, the man most responsible for creating and shaping no, preferred realistic costumes suited to the roles played. He favored attire that would befit a character. When no was being fashioned, theater troops did not charge admission fees, but rather hoped for donations from the audience. The most common form of donation was garments. Audience members from all walks of life donated their clothing on stage, and we know this because court diaries from the 14th and 15th centuries write about it. According to one contemporary source, in 1464, during three days of no performances, at least 237 garments, including the clothes worn by the shogun himself, were donated. Among the items of clothing so given were many of the finest woven fabrics and textiles imported from China. In this way, a variety of clothing styles, from simple hemp garments worn by commoners to elegant silk robes of the nobility, fell into the hands of performers and were transformed into costumes for the No stage. In short, early No costumes were basically the donated clothing of everyday people and, particularly, the elite. The three steps in front of a no stage that are only used today in the Okina no are remnants of and a reminder of this early donation practice. By the mid Muromachi period, the offerings were made backstage prior to the performance instead of on stage after the performance. To show his gratitude, the Shite would wear the donated garment in the performance to the delight of the donor. Sadly, there are very few surviving textiles from the early history of no. Over the course of the 17th century, no costumes became more ornate as they transformed from normal street fashion to a set of rarefied costumes designed to transfix an audience. With the financial support of the Tokugawa shogunate, daimyo, and samurai, over the course of the Tokugawa period, as weaving techniques were mastered and improved upon, no costumes became even more elaborate. Designs became more integrated, with ground and background elements working to enhance motifs and create a sense of depth. During the Tokugawa period, no was an essential element at many public events, and prominent daimyo built no stages in their castles. Daimyo and samurai studied no chanting, music, and dance, for it was an important hallmark of one's education. At a party, a samurai never knew when they might be called upon for an impromptu performance. No troops, costume makers, mask makers, musicians, and others tended to thrive as the wealthy military aristocracy competed amongst themselves to produce the most awe-inspiring no performances. Dazzling and very expensive costumes were at the center of many of these spectacles. Throughout most of the relatively peaceful 268 years of the Tokugawa period, the Tokugawa government encouraged daimyo to patronize no, because it would rather military leaders lavish money on no than military preparations. It was during the Tokugawa period, with the patronage of the elites, that weaving in Japan reached astonishing heights.
For over five centuries, the highest quality weaving industry in Japan has been focused in the Nishijin district of Kyoto, and it is here that many no costumes are crafted. No costumes are magnificent works of art, but they are also incredibly expensive to produce in terms of the raw materials that go into them and the hundreds of hours of skilled craftsmanship needed throughout the production process. Today, the Nishijin district faces a crisis as the skilled craftspeople who make no costumes are disappearing and there are not enough young people going into the business. ま、僕というふうに思っています。うん、ノイショーっていうのはやっぱりその and in all know, the shite with their sumptuous and sublime costumes will remain the flowers on the stage.